Automated customer communication is the future of customer service. There is no swerving it. Instead, many companies are hurtling towards it, enjoying the increasing ease of designing, developing and delivering chatbots. What's more, user cases are also maturing rapidly. And so many models now feed from back-end integrations to pull personalised information and complete more complex transactions. Thanks to this rising sophistication, many promising conversational AI statistics are coming to the fore. To help us unpack this and some frustrations that come with it, we are joined virtually by author, journalist, media analyst and commentator on information and communications technology, Arthur Goldstock. Very good morning to you, Arthur. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Simpiwe. Thank you. You know, when you were here um, about a couple of days ago, we, we spoke about, you know, AI, the impact thereof, and just a broader conversation around AI. And uh, there was a facet of AI, which is called ChatGPT. Maybe let's start there. What is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a um, chatbot that gives you answers to any question you ask if it has that information in its system but it can also generate content for you. So you can ask it to write a letter, an article, even a research paper, and it will write a few th up to a few thousand words for you. So it can actually take over your writing tasks for you, but it bases that on a database of language. So it doesn't really check facts as such. It just uh, looks at what language it should use to answer your question. But that technology, is similar to the t technology that's used in chatbots that we deal with uh, when we um, have that option with companies where we have accounts online and they say you can talk to our chatbot. It's not quite the same as ChatGPT because ChatGPT is aimed at um, the mass market and anybody who has any request for any content, whereas the chatbots that companies have are very specific to their uh, service. Right, right. And I suppose the overarching perception that uh, sort of dampens attitudes towards chatbots is that they are less helpful than human agents. Just how true is this? That's very uh, true. And the reason for that is in contrast to ChatGPT, which is trained on a massive amount of content, they call it a large language model, the uh, business chatbots tend to be trained on very small amounts of information and typically it's only the, the information that's already available on the uh, company's website. So it uh, doesn't really have the ability usually to give you a nuanced response. In other words, a mm. response that's based on your specific needs. It looks for a generic response that fits everyone's needs in effect. And I see that organizations are looking for, you know, the, for the best ways to incorporate artificial intelligence into their businesses and better serve customers and end users. Will we see more of these in the future? We'll see a lot more of them, especially now that um, AI is on everyone's lips and uh, chat, chatbots like ChatGPT and Google Bard and uh, Microsoft Bing AI have become commonplace they, in fact, even at the top of your search results now, if you do a search on Google, it starts off with an AI-generated summary of probably the best answer you're going to get. So, for example, if you ask it why did chatbots fail, in the past it would simply send you to a list of links on articles about why chatbots fail. Now it will actually give you a, a list of the reasons that uh, chatbots fail. So mm. that's actually a good starting point for this. And mm. one of the uh, reasons is that they have limited understanding of language and they are unable to learn from experience. So they're not learning as they go along. And a, a, a good AI model will learn as it goes along. That's the idea behind AI. Yeah. It uses something called machine learning to learn from all its interactions. The chatbots that um, most of our financial institutions <laughs> and Medical aid companies have, for example, don't learn as they go along. They simply draw on an existing menu. And how does conversational AI differ from traditional chat? Conversational AI is where the AI is actually trained to understand what you're asking, not just uh, look for keywords. So, uh, for example, uh, the, the biggest medical aid in this country has a, a chatbot that looks for keywords in your question and then matches that to a set of likely questions 
and it's asked you is um, do these questions match your query and then you say yes so it's really a matching engine you could say it matches keywords conversational ai engages in conversation understands the context of uh, what you're saying and responds based on that context based on the content not on keywords and that's the difference between your basic business chatbot and a really good conversational AI tool being built into the site. I suppose we, we cannot have this conversation without, of course, touching on some of the pitfalls of uh, ChatGPT. I mean, we've, we've spoken at length about the pitfalls around AI in general, in particular robots, because the, the, there's been some consternation with regards to the potential that uh, you know, it, it might take up jobs. So should we embrace ChatGPT this time around? We should. It's not just ChatGPT. It's all the uh, uh, language models or the AI uh, models. We certainly should because they make businesses more efficient, or they should, if a business uses it properly and is not just relying on its own internal expertise, but combines it with all the massive amounts of research and breakthroughs going on in the uh, world at large. That is going to make businesses more productive. And the more productive a business is, the bigger the business gets, the more people it has to hire. So indirectly, AI will actually help businesses boost employment rather than reduce employment. What we will see is reduced employment in places like call centers. But those who are working in call centers will have these uh, AI tools at their disposal to make them better call center operators. The typical call center operator typically doesn't answer uh, or resolve your problem because they don't have enough information on the one hand and they don't have enough uh, rights or authority to act on your requirement on the other hand. With AI tools, bots and assistance at their side, they can assist you better. So they become better call center agents. And um, the other aspect of it is where a chatbot can't help you, it needs to hand off to a human agent. And um, in many cases, there isn't a human agent available. So chatbots should actually help companies enhance their service by giving better answers, by being more efficient, but also by interacting with human call center agents more effectively. And how much does ChatGPT extend insofar as data analysis? I mean, are there any useful features or face sets that we should be on the lookout for? You can't really use ChatGPT for data analysis of data that's on the internet mm -hmm. because it's trained on language, not on data as such. Okay. But in terms of AI tools that uh, are designed for data analysis, those are incredibly powerful and they can re reduce the time it takes to analyze vast amounts of data from months and weeks down to seconds. And in the medical field especially, we're going to see that uh, the use of AI for data analysis is going to speed up uh, diagnostics um, as, as well as uh, prescribing medicines, but more significantly, and I think most significantly, it's going to speed up the creation of new medicines, new cures for existing or new ailments. Mm -hmm. And uh, just considering the growth of uh, this enterprise call, called coding that has since been introduced in some schools, so is there a difference then between data analysis and code interpreting? And uh, where does ChatGPT come in there? Well, coding is basically writing the code that allows all these IT tools to function. Even AI uh, has to be based on code, and the coders are the ones who make AI possible. Coding is like another language. It's like giving instructions, but instead of it being in your home language, it's in computer language. Where AI comes into it, and even ChatGPT, it can help you write code. So you can, in fact, even use ChatGPT or Google Bard or Microsoft Bing AI. Those are all basically similar. People talk about ChatGPT, but it's just one of many of these language models. All of them can actually teach you to write code and they can write code for you, but they can't create original uh, code as such. They can't create advanced code yet. In the future, they will. And uh, coding will just be a means for understanding what's happening. It won't be a means for uh, taking uh, technology further. People uh, who want to 
uh, operate at a high end of technology in that sense uh, will have to go far beyond basic coding. But that basic coding gives you an understanding of the language of computers and gives you the ability to understand what you can do with computers, what you can ask AI to do for you far more effectively. All right, Arthur, great chatting to you and uh, we hope to see more of you as we get into more discussions around AI because we, we're getting more questions than, answered, uh, than answers as uh, you know, we see the growth and the surging of uh, artificial intelligence. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Cynthia.